Welcome to episode 2 of Ride to Canada, the train puzzle game where you complete each country and hopefully, eventually I'll find my way to Canada. At least I assume I will find my way to Canada. I'm not, not, not sure what's right of this of the Oceana map, but I'm currently in South America, completed Colombia, so now on to Venezuela. Now... I've already done the, and I'm not even going to have a hope of pronouncing this name correctly. Barquisimeto? I have no idea. I can pronounce Valencia. Maracay? Maracaibo? That may be a bit badly pronounced as well, but I can't pronounce this one. But I've apparently already done this one once. Possibly when I was trying the game out for the first time to see what it was like. And I have no idea how I did it. But, I will do it again. In this game, basically, you try and get your train to go through the... The station corresponding to the last wagon colour. So, when it goes through the yellow one, it, it clears it. But that one, with the green on the end, will not go... When it goes through a red station, won't work. But the one with the blue one on the end, going through a blue station will correctly remove the wagon. So, essentially, I've got to send this train to the blue station. Well, sorry, no I don't. I've got to send it to the red station first. Duh. It's the last wagon. Then it's got to, so it's got to go down here, down there, then to the yellow station next, means it's got to go down there, up through the purple station, then up through the green, and back, and up to the blue. At least but the fact you're trying to get, get rid of the last wagon, rather than the Columbia scenarios where you, if you had a colour on your train, you could take it through that station. You had to try and figure out the optimal route. Well, this is pretty much dictating the route to you. Because I have to go through the red station. Followed by the yellow station. Followed by the purple station. So as long as I flip the right switches, it's not like I'm making a great deal of decisions on this one. There we go, up there, through the purple, onto the green, as you can see, he's getting faster, then onto the blue, the less wagons he's carrying, the faster he gets. And completed optimally with 0 0.6 seconds left. So now on to Valencia. Okay, he's got to get to the red station. The fastest way to the red station is down here, through there. Then he's got to go to the yellow station, which is going to be interesting. Because he can't get it that way. He's got to come to the yellow station from that direction. Which means he's got to go to the red station, come down. Okay, this is definitely quirky. If I go to the red station by going around that way, then to get to the yellow station, he's going to have to come out of there, go through there and back up, then go to the blue station, then come back up and go to the green station. I don't think that's going to be optimal. I think would probably be optimal is if I go around there no yeah, I don't know anyway I haven't done this one before so I don't know what is optimal isn't I'm gonna go to the red station then out here around there and back up that way okay so let's go to the red station to start with I really, I really do doubt I'm going to get the optimal. Thing on this, okay, you've got to come out of there. And you need to go that way. Basically, I had to turn this train around. 
and that seemed like the best way of turning it around but like I say it does just because I've done it this way doesn't make it optimal I'll accept a a, a two stopwatch victory as these things are you don't get stars you get stopwatches I will accept that quite happily to be bluntly honest but it would be nice to get three because I couldn't see a better way of doing it than that and Okay, apparently that was optimal. Okay. This time I've got to go to the red station. Yeah. Okay, if I go that way, then I'm going to have to go some weird way to get to the yellow station. That's so if I go down there, that'll go to the yellow station. Up there to the green station. Down there, up to the blue station, and how do I get you to the purple? Oh, okay, I can see this, so I need to go... Right, as you can see, there's two ways of getting to the red station. One is to go down there, but if I do that, then I'm going to come out that way, and I can't go... I get myself in a loop going that way, or I'm going to have to go round down there and back round somehow to get to the yellow station, which would be bad. Uh, if I send it down this way... If I send it around there and down there to get to the red station, it will automatically come out of there and go to the yellow station, which is next. And straight along here to the green station. Then I can send it down here and up there to get to the blue station. Then back around here, out there and down there to the purple station. That's the theory. So I want to switch to that one. And of course, as I've learnt in the previous two scenarios, once the train starts shedding carriages, it gets faster. So I will have less time to react once the train starts getting faster. That's the red, then it goes to the yellow, then it needs to go to the green, so that needs to go straight. And that needs to go down there. No, that needs to go down there to get to the blue station. And it's going to come out there. You have to do a, a loop, okay. I don't know if it's going to have enough time. That needs to go that way. Looks like it might have enough time to get to the purple station at Marrakei. Oh, 0 0.3 seconds left. I'm not entirely sure how exactly how optimal that is, but it made it. Maracaibo. Okay. So the first thing I could do is get this to the blue station. Not making this easy on me, are they? I can't even see how to get to the blue station right now. Okay, if I come down here, down here and round, that gets me to the blue station. And how do I get out of there to the yellow station? I want to go down that way to get to the blue station, preferably. But I can't see how to do that. Okay, I get to the blue station. Then I have to go down that same route to the... Basically flip that and get to the yellow station. I just have to go up and around there to the green station. Oh, gold, gold. Okay, this is going to be messy. But I'll get to the blue station. If I was around there, then I'm going to send it. It's going to have to come back up here and go back down there and that way to the yellow station. After that, I need to get it to the green station, I think. Yep. Which is, if I go up that way, yep. So once it comes out of there and out of the yellow station, it needs to go that way and that way. That'll hit the green station, it'll come around there, and then we'll head you back down there, and that way to the red station. And again, I'm doubting the optimability of this solution. However, I've been wrong before about how optimal things are. And with less than a second to go, that was apparently optimal. Okay.
And this is the add different coloured things to your train, preferably not next to each other, or definitely not the same colour next to each other, and get as many points as possible. There is no failing or optimability, it's just how many points can you score. This is, okay, where am I? Alrighty, we'll go down there to start with. Down there. And you can come round here. That way. Apparently I've managed to get, should get five different colours next to each other, which should be a reasonable amount of points per second. Well, not next to each other, five different colours. Send you up back up there. And this time we will send you that way. And that way. This train's getting rather long. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll send you straight down. Mainly because I don't have much choice. You're not going to get the green one. Okay, well, I'm going to 21 points a second. I'll live with that. Make that 25 points a second. I don't know what is a good score or a bad score doing this, but... I will happily take 1,438. Apparently I did the optimal solution for all of the cities in Venezuela before going to Caracas and getting that score. And if I get back to the map, my South American score is now 28,428. My Venezuela score being a lot higher than my Colombia score, like almost 50% higher. And next time around, it will be Brazil. But that's going to be where I'm going to end this episode. I'm still on the fence about how much I like this game. The puzzles are interesting enough, it's making me think. The graphics are good enough for what is a puzzle game. I mean, to be honest, they, yeah, they could have chosen anything. They could have chosen a horse and cart to demonstrate it. But it's got a train, and I like trains. So there is that. I'm not... Um, what's his name? Uh, Sheldon, in the Big Bang Theory, obsessed with trains, but I happen to like trains, probably because I spent a large amount of my time in growing up in Europe, in my early 20s in Europe, where you um, spend a lot of time on trains because they've got a decent public transport system, which relies heavily on trains, especially in England. So there is that. Maybe that's affecting the way I think about trains. But like I said, they could have done the graphics with a horse and cart, a car, a truck, anything really. They could have done it with a snail. You know, that doesn't really matter. So the graphics are good enough. The puzzles are making me think. It's just... There's something that hasn't caught my my love of this the same way Conduct Deluxe did or um, Train Valley and Train Valley 2. Or even... Um, what was it? Little Gold Miner? That was a wonderful little game. Even though it's you know, an entirely different concept to this, but little train-based puzzle game. I'm just not sure about this one yet. I'm still enjoying it to a, a reasonable degree, but it hasn't sucked me in and, and made this, you know, I, I must finish the next scenario because I, I must do it now. It hasn't got me to that point yet. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but it's still enjoyable. I'll stop chuntering on now. I'm just trying to, trying to vocalise what's going on in my head with how enjoyable I find this and it's good but it's not truly addictive yet maybe it will be maybe it won't be I don't know until I got further into it so you're gonna have to work this out for yourself whether or not you're gonna like this game because 
I honestly couldn't tell you one way or the other to jump on this game and get it now or think about it. But there again, it cost me, I think, was it the 20% off? I think it was something like $1.60. And it really didn't break the bank to get this game. So it's not like it's, you know, I don't know, Train Valley 2 or any of the other games which, you know, cost $10, $10 and up. So for, you know, $1.50. The other, one thing I would say about this game is it needs a title screen. Because once you're in this game, you wouldn't have a clue it's called Ride to Canada. There's nothing in here that indicates it's called Ride to Canada. Don't know why? There just isn't. Right, with that minor criticism, I will end this episode. As always, I hope you enjoyed, or at least enjoyed pointing and laughing as I try and vocalise what's going on in my brain. Always a bad thing with me. And hopefully I will see you down the road for more episodes of Ride to Canada. Adios.